In this video, I want to re revisit the quotient rule and talk about how it behaves with respect to the chain rule, which we've been learning about in lecture 22 right here. So just as a reminder, we saw previously that if f and g are two differentiable functions such that g of x doesn't go to zero, then the derivative of f of x divided by g of x is going to be g of x times f prime of x minus f or f of x times g prime of x over g of x squared, for which as the order of the functions in the numerator matters, I taught you, of course, the poem, low d high minus high d low square the bottom, here we go, to try to help us remember the quotient rule. We've seen examples of computing things with the quotient rule, but we didn't actually see the proof. We didn't see why the quotient rule works. And I promised you that we'd see it later on. We're at, now at that moment. It turns out we can prove the quotient rule by combining the chain rule, which we've proven, with the product rule, which we proved earlier. And so I wanna show you how that's gonna work out here. So consider we wanna calculate the derivative of f of x divided by g of x. Okay, well, the first thing to observe is if you're dividing by g of x, that's the same thing as multiplying by g to the negative one power. Now, be careful here. In this context, this negative one superscript does not mean the inverse function. This actually means the negative one exponent. That is, this is a power right here. So you'll notice I've turned my quotient into a product. This suggests that the product rule is going to come in play as we try to take the derivative. So by the product rule, we're going to get f prime of x times g of x, uh, g of, g of x to the negative 1 power. And then you're going to get f of x times the derivative of g of x to the negative 1 power. So that's why the product rule was necessary. But how do we deal with this part right here? Because when we look at this expression g of x to the negative 1 power, we should think of this in terms of function decompositions. There's two functions in play. There's the reciprocal function u to the negative 1. And then there's the inner function of g of x. So we put g of x inside of u. That's where this g of x to the negative 1 came from. So if we take the derivative using the chain rule here, we're going to take the derivative of u to the negative 1. Well, by the power rule, that should look like negative, neg negative u to the negative 2 power. And then if we take the derivative of the inner function, that should just be a g prime of x. You get something like this. And that's exactly what translates over to this expression right here. We get a negative g of x to negative 2 power times g prime of x. Great. Now, let's go back to fraction form. So if you have a g of x to negative 1, that means you're dividing by g of x. If you have a g of x to negative 2, that means you're dividing by g squared. Now, these fractions have they have uncommon denominators. So to find a common denominator, we need to take the first fraction times top and bottom by g of x, as you can see right here, for which case then the new numerator will become f prime of x times g of x. The second denominator is already f prime of, uh, excuse me, f of x times g prime of x. And so combine those together, you get the usual quotient rule. So voila, there's the proof of the quotient rule. But it turns out that this proof also illustrates another interesting observation. It shows us how we can calculate the derivative of a quotient without using the quotient rule. If you just combine the product rule with the chain rule, you can always calculate the derivative of a function. Let's take a look at such a thing. Let's find the derivative of f of x, where, which is the function x squared plus 1 over 3x plus 2 with this idea of the chain rule. So we can write this as a product. We get x squared plus 1 times 3x plus 2 to the negative 1 power. So if we take the derivative using the product rule, f prime of x would look like, well, we take the derivative of x squared plus 1. Uh, that's going to be a 2x. Then you're going to get a 3x plus 2 to the negative 1 power. Then the next one, we're going to get the x squared plus 1. And then taking the derivative using the chain rule, we're going to get negative 3x plus 2 to the negative 2 power times that by 3, like so. And so writing these as fractions, you're going to get 2x over 3x plus 2. The next one, you're going to get subtract x squared plus 1 uh, times that by 3 over 3x plus 2 squared. In order to have a common denominator, we need another 3x plus 2 here. So we have to do that to the numerator as well. For which case then, if we just pause for a moment, at just, just at this moment, what we get is we're going to get a low d high minus high d low square the bottom. And here we go.
So I want you to see here that if you rewrite every fraction as a product of the reciprocal, you can always calculate the derivative using the chain rule and the product rule, which are a lot easier to remember uh, because with the quotient rule, the location, the minus sign and such, uh, the order of operations matters in that context. If you mess it up, you can mess up the whole derivative. So you actually don't need the quotient rule, but why do we have the quotient rule? Because of the quotient rule, you can skip all of this garbage, right? All of this stuff goes away. If you just apply the quotient rule directly, you end up right here. So the point of memorizing the quotient rule is to simplify this calculation so that we can just start at this moment and we end up with a 6x squared plus 4x minus 3x squared minus 3 all above 3x plus 2 squared. If we combine like terms, we get a 3x squared plus 4x minus 3 all on top of 3x plus 2 quantity squared, which is the same derivative. Um, so I would I would definitely rec recommend the quotient rule. It'll simplify your calculations in the long run, but also be aware that you don't necessarily need it. If you're in some type of desert island scenario, you're, you're playing crashes in the South Pacific and only you and your volleyball Wilson survive and you have to calculate the derivative of a quotient in order to get back home. Be aware that if, you're, if your quotient rule didn't make it out of the crash, it's okay. If you, with the scraps called the product rule and the chain rule, you can reproduce the quotient rule if necessary. Although I think memorizing it really would be a time saver for you in the long run.